uh, Sam and Harry were both very good college golfers, great post college college golfers. And prior to working for Mike Gospel, I asked him a question like, when you played golf and you went out there and played with a dozen golf balls, did you ever like once in your career not go? Yeah, I assume that all these balls in this box are not only similar but identical, right? So I would assume if we did a survey, focus group study, or whatever with our readers or consumers in general, I think if if we could have, if we asked people before this whole thing started, I think the majority would assume the same. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding, and you know, not just now, we've known about for a while that that is not the case. And there are some companies that are worse than others. Uh, this week, Sam happened to be cutting open balls in the uh, test facility. And one that uh, was very concerning was the ball that you're getting ready to see here in a second. And it was a Callaway Chrome Soft. And that's about <clears throat> as bad of a core centering as we have ever seen. Yeah, I've never seen anything that lopsided before. Now, that being said, Callaway... You know, it might not be known to the average consumer, but in the golf industry, for those that have cut open golf balls on the regular and know anything about golf balls, Callaway is known to be a, you know, pretty common offender to not being able to center their course. Would you agree with that, Tony? Yeah, I think it's, again, right, a lot of it is conjecture sometimes from competitors. But, yeah, if you if you go around the industry and say, hey, who has what problems – this is one that continues to come up. So I kind of look at it as, look, we all know that, that these brands talk and they, they talk shit about one another to a degree. Um, but my, my general thinking is if, if three companies that have sort of no business <laughs> working together on anything all tell you the same story, uh, then the, there's probably something to it. And yeah, this, this sort of core issue is, is something we'd heard about. I actually heard about it from from other media guys who, who did a, a ball test quietly a couple of years ago. And as far as I know, never published anything, saw something similar to what we saw. Uh, and, and for us, it's like, right. It, it's always a curiosity. So we do our ball test. We publish the results. We take some heat. Um, there was some anomalous stuff like, right. Like a Chrome soft is one example of a few of a ball that went dramatically offline. And so our question, with a robot that generally speaking should right. be putting and so you balls check the robot anywhere, but within a, Right. You, so you make sure the robot swung its swing and you, and you check the numbers and then you go around and you ask people, go, hey, we saw this. What could it be? And they say, yeah, well, if you if you saw a spin axis tilt, then it was probably an off center core. And, and Sam, I don't know, was this the ball that you cut open? Was this one of the ones we actually tested or was this from somewhere else? This was part of the box of the balls that we saved of balls that we tested. So, yeah, I mean, so certainly. And again, we're, we're still trying to get more information. I want to be transparent about that, right? We're, we are trying to put a value on, hey, if a ball is X off center, what, what impact does that have? Or if the core is, is, or excuse me, the cover is thicker on one side, what, does, what impact does right, that So great have? point. So a lot of people are asking, all right, you guys are, all these people out there are now finding and cutting golf balls. Um, like I told you last week, you created a monster, which is going to end up being a good thing, I think, for all golfers and the industry. Um, but right now, what we're doing is learning, right? And we know information. We know for one, for those asking, like, how does, what does this do to my golf ball when I hit it? One, this definitively affects performance of a golf ball, meaning that ball will not perform the same as a ball that, that a, a ball that has a center core. But there are other issues, quality control issues that happen with golf balls, no different than any other product that is made. There are, tolerances there are things like that but this ball should have never made it into a box and you know i spoke with the ceo of callaway yesterday and he readily admits that you know um and they are investing heavily supposedly <clears throat> what we say around here is it's all bullshit till it ain't bullshit so anybody can say anything that does not mean i do not believe them when they say they're going to invest heavily to fix this problem uh, because in my opinion and some others, you know, I think they were focusing more on the paint on the outside of the ball with patterns and things like that than they were focused on the quality control on the inside of the ball because you couldn't see the inside of the ball. Problem is, Tony's created this monster now where now you can see the inside of the ball. And guess what? There's a shitload of Callaway Chrome Soft and other balls 
that are sitting in the woods that are going to start to be cut open. And no matter if they fix the problem today or tomorrow, there are hundreds and thousands of balls sitting out there that I guarantee you, you're going to find similar issues that we're finding. I mean, that's from the last five years, right? Is, uh, is it like we're thinking that it's gone back for five years that it's been going through? Tony, you can probably talk to uh, on this more, but I mean, this problem happened before the Chromosoft, correct? With Callaway balls? Yeah, I mean, and again, look, it's... I hate the idea that we're we're just piling it on Callaway, or that's the perception. But I mean, well, this is a Callaway ball company. that we're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and certainly right. Callaway was the only company to come out and call the results of our ball test into question. And I think, you know, sort of that ball that Sam cut open kind of shows, hey, like this this is how what we saw as as crazy as it sounded at the time when we say, hey, a ball went you know 30, 40 yards offline. This is how it can happen. So, yeah, I was certainly more curious about Callaway balls. So I've gone back um, as far as Hex Black. I've cut open a couple of Tor IXs as well. And, yeah, there are there are some centering issues I've seen. Um, what I would describe as batter issues or lack of consistency to see to the mix. And what I mean by that, I've got one right here. So I've, I've called this one. This is also a Chrome Soft. I call it a, uh, a Chrome Soft Swirly. Uh, and hopefully you can see those swirl move patterns. It, right move there. it a little closer to the camera if you can, Tony, so people can see. I so, mean, we've definitely seen some of these in other balls, so, and and yeah, so that's, the, the, some some balls that we've cut open recently. They w the core itself is just the same color, and then there's like a a, a core, and then it's like a seems a little differentiate yeah, so of color within that simple, core. So that's something. a little bit different. So that that's a couple different things. So right this. This here, this the swirly, and that's again, poor mixing, correct? This, what's that? That's poor mixture, correct? Right. Yeah. So when when you part of the, I guess I don't know if it's technically the first step, but it's an early step in the process, right? You you sort of take all your ingredients and and throw it into the an industrial equivalent of a kitchen aid, right? And it just mixes it all up, and then you start you you create your batter that way, and so that that's something that should be a consistent color in in most golf balls right you, you shouldn't see swirl patterns and with that one what i did was i actually cut it twice and you can kind of see how how the swirls kind of gradiate and all right tony for golfers out there right now until we can get some definitive performance numbers meaning if your core is off this much this is how much to expect for performance differences of this kind what are three common things that you see that are uh red flags in lack of quality control inside of a golf ball for one it's off center core right off center cores we've seen and you know i've seen it in multiple brands so let's not just say hey this is just a one brand problem it, it happens um off center cores lack of uniform thickness in the cover is another one so you'll see sort of visibly more urethane on one side of the ball than the other um that one's pretty common uh the swirly core so inconsistent mixing i guess is how i would i would describe that and uh, sometimes you get cover defects so you know sort of like almost like part of it got melted or scratched or something like that at the factory and that can affect performance so oh yeah anything spe that speaking of that real quick that means yeah so you guys out there that are getting your balls refinished right or buying balls that are refinished what Stop do you say it. yeah and Don't why tell them why that is tony so with, basically, look, you need the cover of the golf ball to be as uniform as possible, meaning, you know, the the dimple depth is what it's designed to be. So as soon as you start sort of repolishing and repainting, you can get uneven layering of the dimples, and that's going to create a ball that doesn't fly the way it's designed to. Okay, it's, so, it's, so yeah. let me ask it's you a not, question. That's not where you want to save money on a golf ball. Definitely I, not. I'm a golfer. I just bought six dozen Titleist Pro V1s. I don't want to cut open every single Pro V1 to figure out if there's an issue with them. Is there something that I can do at home to check the quality of Ebs, the golf Epsom ball salt before test. I... That's yeah, we've talked like the anyone. check go pro spinning. And again, it's not really, it doesn't really check the quality, I would say, right? Um, the Epsom salt, when you, you suspend it, and again, guys, this one, this is pretty simple, right? You just mix Epsom salt with water, and you just keep adding Epsom salt until you get to the point where the ball floats. And what that's going to do, the ball is going to tilt to the heavy side. So the heavy side of the ball, if there is one, is going to go down. Now, the faster, and then, you know, once you sort of identify, kind of mark the top of the ball, and then just start rolling the ball and get it rolling. And the faster that it returns to the same spot, the more kind of 
out of round or off center so of the this, core. So this, this ball here, in the ball be. this Callaway ball here would flip to that side really quickly. Yeah, theoretically, and that's yeah. that's the same thing, right? When you when you hit it with when you when you hit the ball, whether it's with a robot or with your own swing, right? At impact, that ball is going to immediately fall to the heavy side. The heavy side is going to drop and. You know, if you, you talk about basic ball flight laws, what that basically amounts to is a rapid increase or rapid change in the spin axis. So, you know, that's why if you look at our data, Sam, as you recall, we were looking at some of the numbers and we're like, is this right? We saw spin axis tilts in the in the plus or minus 10 degree range mm -hmm. when typically it would just be a degree or two. That's why it's it's at impact, the ball tilting to the heavy side and creating that curvature. And that's as soon as it flight. comes off the tee. Oh yeah, it's immediate. Sure. So it's a me that's that's the thing. Every yeah. everything that happens at impact happens in fractions of se of seconds. So, yeah. yeah. So, the problem. Great question, Sam. So if I'm a golfer and I just spend a hundred dollars or whatever on golf balls, how do I know which ones are good? That's the problem. We don't have X-ray machines at home, most of us, to be able to determine <laughs> where the cores of these balls are. If that is the one thing you're going to look for, like there's obviously more issues than core going on, right? So the, you, even if you the Epsom salt tells you something, it's not going to tell you about the swirls in the core. It's not going to tell you necessarily about some of the other issues. The problem Probably is business, right? this is a problem that the golf ball industry has, right? And that's just the way it is. There are companies definitively that do a better job at this. and But at the end of the day, this is real. Yeah. And golfer, this needs to be fixed by companies, you know? And um, how is... Who's who's to blame for this? Is it a, is it a both company you and manufacturer? You have to give a shit about quality control in whatever company you work for. I don't give a damn if you're making golf balls or you're you know writing articles. It does not matter, right? You have to have checks in place yep. to find these things and make sure they don't get out into the world. And we and we get you know people are start cutting them because even if you have quality control checks. Sometimes you need quality control checks after quality control checks after. I mean, there have to be checks and balances for this stuff. And the companies that invest in that have less of these issues. Well, and I think it's, it's important to note, like centering a core, it's an easy thing to say, but it's hard. It's to do. a really difficult thing to do when you think about like the entire process. Right. So you have to have like a mechanical process that centers kind of your bottom layer. Every layer has to have a process a precise process to center. That's extremely difficult to do. And that's before we even talk about the fact like, you know, these things essentially go in an oven to cook, right? And so think about the grill at your house, right? How difficult it is to, to maintain consistent center temperature in the center of the grill, in the front of the grill, in the back of the grill, right? That's what you have to do. All of these temperature has to be consistent everywhere in the oven that cooks it. Right. So that that's part of it. And inconsistent temperature, Harry, is is part of why you see kind of that that different coloring in the center becomes right. more of like a lava cake. Okay. And some companies do that's that by design. But to answer your question, Adam, like to center cores and build the technology and the machinery and the precision into all your process to, to do that costs a lot of money. And you're here's my here's, here's my answer work. to your response. If you don't have that in place, don't sell goddamn golf balls to people. But but here's the thing, right? There, some of this is to a degree on us, right? Because if you look at, you're you're charged say forty five dollars a golf ball, right? And or dozen golf balls, and consumers, some of you, you, we hear it all the time. It's like these guys are charging us this much because they have to pay tour pros, right? If they didn't have to charge pay tour pros, it wouldn't be this. Issue. No, there's precision that costs money, and and quite honestly. If you want a better golf ball, if you want a truly perfect golf ball from every manufacturer, like that's that's not a forty-five or fifty-dollar a dozen problem. That's a sixty-dollar a dozen a problem. Like that's that's the level of precision. You yeah, need we were to talking get. to somebody, and you're not going to pay for that. We were talking to somebody the other day, and they had a eye-opening statement. You know, they are not in the industry. They got exposed to the industry, and they walked out of a situation and went, "Man, like these companies that." get it right that put all this effort into this i always i never wanted to spend that amount of money on their balls but after i've seen it you go i'm shocked they don't sell them for a hundred dollars a dozen that's right. how much effort and work goes in and machinery and time and just resources and everything that goes together to make these balls perform well and most golfers just don't know that but that all being said i think as golfers if i'm going to walmart and buying a 15 dollar a dozen i don't 
I can maybe expect a ball like that that we're seeing at $45 a dozen. And if you're going to call it tour quality, I'm not expecting to see that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I, and like I said, Callaway was clear. They, uh, they, don't, they don't find that acceptable either. And so, you know. Well, they found we it acceptable room. until we cut that ball open. How about that? Well, again, you know, I don't know if they would say, yeah, that was acceptable until we got caught or holy shit, you know, we need to rapidly improve the quality control. Yeah, but it's been, go- it's been think, going on for such a long time. There, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody anywhere who would look at that ball and go, yeah, that. <laughs> Okay, well, let's, let's, let's be, this is called no putts given, so let's be honest here. We've been on calls with Callaway over the last few days. Yesterday, I talked to the CEO of Callaway, Chip Brewer, and it was a great call, but I ask him all the same question. If we don't do this ball test, and we don't cut that ball open, are these phone calls happening? I didn't get an uh, answer to any of those questions from anybody, you know? So maybe they are behind the scenes planning, and from what I've heard, they are planning on fixing their ball plant facility and investing – a lot of money into Should, it, I right? Hope they are. But and maybe that I'm sure that was happening before this came about. Um, oh yeah. But I don't know. It it is kind of the timing is interesting, right? Yeah, and, it, and what we don't know, right? Obviously, like I said, everybody agrees that ball shouldn't have left the factory. But whether that's a, you know, whether that's a one in a hundred thousand, a one in ten thousand, a one in a hundred, I don't know. Um, and again, that's. That's why we want to do this whole find it, cut it thing is, you know, like I said, don't buy it, cut it. If you find it in the woods, instead of sticking it in your bag, because you should be playing the same damn ball anyway, every shot, every round, just cut it, cut it and see what we find. Because if, if we can crowdsource this thing, rather than golfers having to take our word for it, like just let's, let's put it out there and, and see if we can get enough of everything from everywhere and everybody, we're going to pretty quickly be able to tell who has issues and who doesn't because again like my feeling is if it's if it's not readily visible to the naked eye it's probably not a big deal but when you see something like what we found then yeah that that that's a big deal and and i know golfers have sort of pushed back and go well what about the different densities and that could offset this and that and like look at the end of the day companies are are using different materials right different different inner core different outer core different formulations for a reason uh, Titleist, Bridgestone, Shrixon, everybody else is working hard to center their cores for a reason. If this stuff didn't matter, companies wouldn't invest heavily in trying to get it right. So while we can't say, yes, absolutely, it matters to this degree or this ball is 75% worse or better or whatever, at this point, we can't give you that information. All I know is everybody who makes a ball is trying to avoid making a ball like that. Well, so it, I think it I think, absolutely matters. I think they're trying to do that now because we called out golf ball companies no, I, think, I, I i as much as i'd love to tra- take credit for everything look this is as well, i said i've found evidence that to some degree this problem goes back a number of years if i've found it they've certainly found it and i'm sure this is but exactly but there's the there's all there's all. my point right there is if they've known about it they just haven't said anything I think about they, it i think they chose you know, when they did this ball war and five-year war and all this stuff, I think they chose – you've got to pick your battles, right? If I had to guess, and, it's, and I'm just making an assumption here, they chose some more flashy marketing things like the Truvis pattern, the painting on the outside of the ball, ways to get people to start focusing on the Callaway ball and get their attention away from the Titleist ball. Yeah, and, let, let's And do, the second – and that Go got ahead. prioritized maybe below centering cores of golf balls. I think now that they've g- gained some market share, they're probably going, all right, let's get this shit right, you know? Yeah, that, I think we had right. totally everything to do with it. I think this just was a catalyst to push it maybe a little faster. Maybe, the, maybe they have the edge. If you go back years upon years upon years at this point, right? Titleist has been a dominant number one in the golf ball space for, for basically as long as anyone can remember and probably then some. And, and for years and years and years, manufacturers have tried to take market share from Titleist um, and everything has failed, right? Whether it's undercutting them on price or whatever, like the strategy to a large degree has been, all right, let's, let's essentially make a, a tour quality ball and, and find a way to compete with Titleist with a ball that's just like Titleist in it. You know, I think a great example is the conversation we had with Chris Bichol at Mizuno last year, where he talked about the mistake they made with the JPX EZ and basically Mizuno, Mizuno was trying to make a ping. And that's essentially what all the ball companies have been trying to do is make a Titleist or a ball that is perceived to be a as great good point. as a Titleist. So, and you, you cannot compete with Titleist 
making a ball that you can't otherwise differentiate. You can't the beat titleist at being titleist, basically. Exactly. And so when when you can sort of tell a story where, hey, soft, right? We, we have soft, fast core. Well, guess what? Soft is fundamentally different than anything Titleist did. It is a way to differentiate your, your product in the marketplace and, and sort of make it more compelling than, than any of the alternatives. And when you put a true vis pattern on a ball, yeah, that is different. It's ex to a degree, it's cool, maybe exciting, but biggest thing, it's different from a Titleist. And well, we not only different, but it's you. It's you. You own that brand. You own that look. Right. You know, when people think about Truvis, they don't think about Titleist. They think about who? Callaway, right? Yeah, and, and let's be clear, right? And, and again, we haven't seen the process. We have an open invite to the ball plant. We're going to probably go out there later this fall to see how Callaway does things, but they made it very clear. Look, the, putting those patterns on a ball okay. is not easy to do. And first of all, they they bought or licensed that Truvis, right? So they essentially own that process. It is now unique to Callaway. And they developed machinery and engineered all this really cool stuff to put those patterns on the ball. And you've seen it evolve to, and they did the same thing with Triple Track, right? They, they licensed the technology, developed the machinery and the tools and the know-how to put those lines precisely on a ball. So they've been they've invested in Truvis patterns. Look, Callaway has and, the coolest really golf cool ball in golf. There is no doubt about it, right? I mean, okay. the Truvis is the coolest ball. The, the Triple Track is cool, but they get, you know. different, yeah, for sure. As long as they get this right, I'm sure it will be great for them. And so, and, and I think, like I said, I, I think, you sort of had to differentiate to gain share. And now that they have unequivocally gained share, right? A definitive number two in the marketplace. Now they have an opportunity where they sort of have a, a reputation. People like the ball, people like the Callaway product. I think Callaway is cool. And now, now they have a position to compete on cool with potentially, right? If they get everything right, if they, they improve the quality and, and, I think raise the compression, right? Because we know soft is not competitive in the tour space. So if they do those things, now they have a ball that potentially, potentially, right? There's at some point there'll be a new ball. We don't know what it looks like, but it's a ball that can potentially compete with, with Titleist and Bridgestone on a performance level and still have the cool factor that comes with true, true this triple track and, and whatever other cool yeah, stuff. Then they I, have. I think, I think they're on a home run if they get, all of that right all right well to end it do you think the chrome soft survives this if if they definitively come out and say we have fixed everything i'm not talking about fixing it. i'm talking about the then name no. chrome soft like then no i don't think it does do you think they're gonna have to change the name of that ball if they start taking our data seriously where soft does really equal slow i mean they, so my, my thinking is look if if you're going to make what is legitimately a tour quality ball. If you're going to do that, you need to raise the compression. And at some point you raise that compression to a point where you to, can't call to it a soft point beyond anymore. where you can legitimately call it soft because at some point somebody's going to compare this theoretical new Callaway ball that is, that is fast, not soft, fast, legitimately fast to, to an older Chrome soft. And the feel is going to be wildly well, it different. Is interesting, and, right? That they really quietly, firmed up that compression right without any telling anybody well that was just yeah on the uh, on the chrome soft x triple track uh one of the callaway guys told me it's slightly firmer i don't know what slightly means exactly i've heard you know somewhere in the ballpark of eight to ten percent so yeah there to be a tour ball it needs to be firmer i don't i don't think anybody argues that who knows anything about golf ball performance at this Agreed. point that is, that is a legitimate fact well, you and, and let's be clear. Look, and again, so we had that call a couple of weeks ago, and and Callaway was upfront about it, uh, and it, it's true for most, not all golf brands. But yeah, they said, yeah, look, our our we have tour pros that play a different ball than what's on the shelf, and Titleist has tour pros that play a different ball than what's on the shelf, and TaylorMade has tour pros that play a different ball than what's on the shelf. Not all of them, but there are tour. Yeah, and there's reasons. I tried to explain this to somebody the other day. If you make three balls, you don't want to make forty-seven different balls, right? And if the guy that you have on tour happens to be in between two balls, I think it's fairly easy to change the mixture a little and, and make him a ball, but also not make 4,700 balls available to the public, right? I mean, that's just yeah, kind that's of Yeah, that's a lot. That's a problem, like, and, and everybody goes, well, they should. Like, no, that's, you have to look at the other side of it. That is a huge problem for retailers, right? Hell yeah. Where instead of stocking three Titleist tour balls, 
you have you're now asked to stock eight because you know people want left dot and left dash and whatever stuff. No, like eighty. They're not. They're not, they're not trying to, to de deceive the consumer. It's just they have to fill the need of the tour guy, which happens to be in between two of their balls. But that doesn't mean yeah, those they guys should. Are, those guys are way more discerning than the average golfer. Those yeah. guys can tell the difference in performance yeah, they can... shot to shot. Like, you know, for a consumer, like having one ball that, that launches here and another here is fine. Tour guys want to be there, then you, well, then until, you give them your ball. Until you fine-tune your, your game to a tour player standard who wants to get a specific thing within and around the greens if they want it to release a little bit more or whatever... Well, which that's brings them. the whole conversation. We'll just kind of end it here. And that is, that's why these balls existed in the world. Because the average golfer never even, wouldn't even know that the ball was Correct. causing that. The DeChambeau's, the, the PGA yeah, Tour pros hit that ball. I've heard from the people on the tour that have said, like, they've hit some of these balls. And they go, look, I'm not playing that ball. You know, it's not consistent enough, you know. You'll probably right. lose that ball before you get a chance to figure out that it's actually the ball, right? But you wouldn't blame it on yourself as an average golfer. Exactly. Well, that's you, what know, I mean. well you would, that, right? You would that's blame what I mean. As you, I'm lose. sorry. You wouldn't blame it on the ball. You're correct. Right, because you wouldn't even have enough time to, to figure out that that's the ball causing it. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. All right, well, that's shot of the truth this week. We could go on for hours about golf balls right now. We'll probably have another discovery by the time this happens next week, especially with all the people out there cutting them up. So, anyway, uh, Tony, do you have anything to say to all the find it, cut it people that you you created this? So, Yeah, keep going, guys, and I'm going to definitely keep going. I'm, I'm just kind of been blown away by the response. It's It's awesome. And I'm just going to ask everybody out there, look, we're, we're not trying to throw anybody out under the bus. We, we just want to find what's what. So, so, so let's all try and do it the right way. Uh, take quality photos if you can. Don't mislead. Like, try and show the side stamp if you can so we all know what we're looking at and there's no, there's no question of, hey, is this legitimate or somebody trying to, to, to make somebody look bad. Let's, Good point. And just remember for up. everybody else out there that, you know, tries to defend this brand or that brand or, you know, tries to fight in the Twitter sphere of whatever, monotony, just remember, like, we're not doing this for any other reason than you. Like, we're literally trying to make the industry a better place and hold them accountable for some things like this and do testing to the best of our ability uh, for consumers. We literally are consumer first. And for everybody out there that disagrees with this, I have still no clue why you would be doing it. Uh, we're making, you know, Callaway is saying they're going to make better quality golf balls. That's good for all golfers. Yeah. So. Anyway, get out there, find them, cut them, and until next week, uh, we'll see what you come up with.